All right. Now you've got your copper, you got your um, pattern on the paper that you want to transfer, and the next step that you need to do is apply the heat and pressure. And this is a tough process to get down. Um, I started out using an iron like most folks. I didn't have a lot of luck with the iron. It was kind of frustrating me. What I found was that at least the iron I had, the bottom wasn't perfectly flat, so I wasn't getting you know, a nice even distribution of pressure and heat um, to this as I was doing it. So luckily my mother-in-law actually had a panini maker and you can swap out the plates um, from the grid lines to just a flat surface. So I'm using a panini maker. If you don't have one, you know, you can go with the iron, but I found this gets much better results. Um, and then I disconnected the heat from the bottom. So only the top plate there is actually getting any heat. So I can actually touch this and not get burned. So once you got copper on there, take your piece of paper, just lay it over that. And then take your three sheets of white paper. I use three, you know, you can experiment with two, four, one, whatever. I found three works for me. And then lay that over the top. And try not to misalign things when you're doing this, which is really easy to do. Some people have figured out clever techniques for avoiding this, but I'm kind of lazy and I just sort of wing it. All right. Okay. So now the whole thing's ready to go. Um, the ink is ready to get transferred and you just want to apply the pressure and heat. So I've set this thing up to a, a level of six on this. You know, it's kind of like a medium heat. I don't think this thing gets terribly hot. Um, and then I apply the uh, pressure um, for about a minute and 10 seconds. Um, when it comes to applying the pressure, you know, more isn't necessarily better. And as far as time goes, I found that um, once you reach a certain amount of heat within the part, um, it's not going to help to keep any more heat going. So if you're having trouble, um, you know, with it not transferring, trying to squeeze it down harder and, and apply the heat longer, I, I just haven't found works. Um, you want a nice light pressure because um, if you apply too much pressure to this, what's going to happen is um, the ink is going to spread out because, you know, you're squeezing it and you're not going to get nice sharp um, lines on your part. Okay, so I bring that down and then I like to just press on the top lightly too as I'm doing this. And I'm applying very little pressure right now. And I just let that sit for about a minute. Alright, after the minute is up, the next thing I do is I remove two of my sheets of paper. Um, and I repeat this process for another 30 seconds. Um, the reason I do this is, if I were to take this out right now and see what it looks like, there's going to be voids in the transfer. So. I try to apply heat in different kind of ways, you know, every, by removing some sheets of paper, you know, maybe some places that weren't getting pressure will now, um, and you'll get kind of a more complete um, transfer. Because what, what you're trying to avoid here is any flaws, um, and it's just a lot of kind of practice and, and experimentation to try to get that to happen. I got the sponge on the top of this thing because it's freaking hot and I don't want to touch it. So, And I prefer to apply pressure right above the part instead of on this handle too much because um, the part, the, the whole thing will bow out and you won't get a good heat distribution. Okay. Now, if I were to take this off now, it would probably be pretty good, but it probably wouldn't be perfect. Um, there's still going to be a few flaws. And this is where I follow up with the iron. Because um, the iron you can move around a little bit, but you have to be really delicate when you do this. So I've got this thing set to cotton. It's pretty darn hot. And I just go ahead and very lightly go over all the parts where I want the transfer to occur. And what I'm doing here is kind of like 
trying to get out any flaws, you know, because there'll be little parts where the heat didn't quite get to, you know, there'll be a line or something that just didn't happen to get the pressure on it and it didn't do the transfer. So following it up with the iron lightly, not a lot of pressure, I find helps a lot. You apply too much pressure here, you're going to smear the ink out and you're not going to get a nice sharp edge definition. One other step. This is my own personal thing. I'm not sure if this is necessary or not. Come on, man, damn it. I'm going to fucking cube of ice. Okay, so I take a cube of ice and I apply it to that back surface. And I have a theory about this and I'm not even sure if it's true or not. But I figure if the copper cools first, the ink is going to want to harden on the copper, right? Um, instead of hard hardening back onto the paper. So I put ice on the back to make sure that the copper is the first thing to cool. All right, after that, I fill a cup with water and I just dunk the part. Let it sit in there for 15 seconds. You don't have to wait a long time. Just long enough for all the paper to soak up the water. All right, here's the moment of truth, so we'll see how I did this time. Um, a lot of people like to play games with how to remove the paper. I find that if you did a good job, the ink is either transferred or it isn't. And no amount of trying to remove the paper delicately is going to change the fact that it didn't bond. So I just peel it right back. And it's looking pretty good so far. And this one came out really nice. Oh, there's a little bit of flaw down there. All right. Damn. <laughs> I got to say that's pretty darn good. Um, you know, you look at the lines, they're sharply defined. There's a little bit of text down here. I can see a little bit of a flaw down here in the corner. And you, you can see kind of here in this area, there isn't complete uh, distribution. So, but along all the areas where, you know, there's actual parts that would mount um, and you have lines and stuff, all that looks really good. So this, this one came out really nicely. Um, and, I, and, I, and I could use this. Um, and you can see like this ink is, is on there good. If you have transfer, it's going to stick. Um, and if you don't, you don't. So, all right, the next step is um, to etch this. Um, so you want to remove the copper um, from all the areas except where there's ink. So you just go to Radio Shack. Hopefully <laughs> you bought this at the same time you bought the, uh, the other piece. Um, and this is just PCB etching. So this is like eight bucks. And um, what I do is I'm really careful about handling this stuff because it's extremely corrosive. Um, it'll like just rust everything and screw it up. So I actually put it in two layers of Tupperware um, just to avoid any spills. And you can reuse this stuff um, for a certain for a certain number of times. Um, it doesn't. After a while, it'll start to lose its ability to etch. Uh, just take, actually, I really should put gloves on. All right, got my gloves on. Let's take that stuff off. And, God, this stuff stinks. So in order to dunk this stuff, um, use this kind of uh, little homemade, highly specialized, extremely expensive tool. So obviously um, this isn't using all the copper. And so you want to try to have to etch away as little copper as you, as you need. Um, so what I just do is I could go ahead and recut it or I can just be a lazy bastard and just grind it off. All right, so I have this part ground down now and uh, so the etchant doesn't have to work so hard. So I can just go ahead and pop part of my handy dandy tool just so that it gets grabbed on the edges. Um, there shouldn't be any contact with the surface um, when you do this. All right, and then you just take it and dunk away. And then let it sit in there for 20 minutes. I kind of come in every five minutes or so, shake it around, um, just agitate it a little bit. And when it's done, it should be nice, ready to use PC board.